misafirlerimiz. Saha Expo kapsamında gerçekleştirdiğimiz panellerimizin beşincisine hoş geldiniz. Dear guests, welcome to the fifth of our panels held within the scope of Saha Expo. Bugünkü sabah oturumundaki panelimizin konusu Türkiye-Ukrayna Savunma Sanayi İşbirliği. The topic of our panel in today's morning session is Turkey-Ukraine Defense Industry Cooperation. Şimdi size kıymetli moderatör ve konuşmacılarımızı takdim etmek istiyorum. Now I would like to introduce you our esteemed moderator and speakers. Panelin moderatörlüğünü üstlenmek üzere Saha İstanbul Yönetim Kurulu Başkanı Sayın Haluk Bayraktar'ı sahneye davet ediyorum. I invite the chairman of the board of Saha Istanbul, Mr. Haluk Bayraktar, to the stage to act as the moderator of the panel. İlk konuşmacımızı çağırıyorum. UKR Spec Export'tan Sayın Vasil Bodnar'ı sahneye davet ediyorum. I would like to invite our first speaker. I invite Mr. Vasil Bodnar from UKR Spec Export to the stage. Şimdi de ikinci konuşmacımızı sahneye davet etmek istiyorum. UKR Spec Export'tan Sayın Pablo Bukin'i sahneye davet ediyorum. Now I would like to invite our second speaker, Mr. Paolo Bukin from UKR Spec Export. Şimdi de üçüncü konuşmacımızı sahneye davet ediyorum. UKR Spec Export'tan Sayın Vadim Nozdra. Buyurunuz. And now I would like to invite our third speaker to the stage, Mr. Vadim Nozdra from UKR Spec Export. Welcome. Son konuşmacımız olarak da STM Genel Müdürü Sayın Özgür Güler Yüzü sahneye davet ediyorum. As our last speaker, I invite the General Manager of Defense Technologies Engineering, Mr. Özgür Güler Yüz, to the stage. Şimdi müsaadenizle sözü paneli yönetmek üzere Sayın Haluk Bayraktar'a bırakıyorum. İyi dinletiler. Within your permission, I would like I would leave the floor to Mr. Haluk Bayraktar in order to moderate the panel. Thank you. Dear guests, dear valuable guests, and our dear panelists, welcome to our panel. We have uh, great panelists with us. I would like to very briefly introduce them. Uh, we have our newly assigned Ukrainian ambassador here, Mr. Bodnar, who has great experience between Ukraine and Turkey relationship. He is with us. Uh, we have Mr. Bukin, who has a long time experience between Turkey and Ukrainian defense industries. He is welcome and with us. And we have uh, Mr. Nozria, director of Ukraine Space Export, the biggest Ukrainian export agency with its uh, great export history. He is with us. And we have our STM general manager, Özgür Bey, uh, representing STM and the uh, Navy side projects between Turkey and Ukraine is with us. So today, all together, we will cover the development of the Turkish and Ukrainian defense industries. Before I came to the panel, I checked the number of agreements between Turkey and Ukraine in the last uh, four, uh, four or five years, and we noticed that there is a really very high level of tendency between two countries when you look at the memorandum of understandings, cooperation agreements. And uh, actually, all of these are built between two friendly and neighbor countries in the good spirit of trust and our strategic partnership. And actually, all these uh, defense-oriented projects between Turkey and Ukraine support and benefit to both countries in a very clear clear way, so it's kind of a win-win uh, strategy. So Ukraine has, and Turkey has really, when you look at it, they, they really have, when you look at the military sectors, Turkey has a history, especially starting after the year of 2000s, Turkey focused on more indigenous and native technology developments, and we, we have the fruit of it. So when you look at Turkey, Maybe 20 years ago, it was about 17 companies working in defense, but now we have more than 1,700 companies. We had 60 projects 20 years back, but now we have 750 projects. And 
building up the export potential and so. And Ukraine is, is as well has a huge inventory and assets on the military arena. And when you look at the size of the militaries, it's very similar. The budgets, maybe Ukraine's military spending is lower, but Ukraine is a very open economy Why the 50 percentage of uh, GDP is exports, whereas in Turkey it's about 30, 35 percentage of total GDP of Turkey is, is exports. So, so actually, in the last four years, the, there is a huge increasing trend. We are right now between Turkey and Ukraine, there are more than 30 projects. And when you look at the trade volume, the total trade volume between Turkey and Ukraine, it's maybe about $2.5 billion, a uh, total $5 billion. But when you look at the defense projects, you have about a total more than a billion dollar total contract value, ongoing projects, and most of them, almost all of them, have been signed in the last three, four years. So it constitutes a really large chunk of the total trade volume between the two countries. And it is, a, it is, it is not a one-sided relationship. It's a really very complementary, which benefits to both countries. So kind, uh, and also Ukraine, as far as I know, in the last October 2020, President Zelensky with the National Strategic Council, they declared Turkey to be their strategic partner. So we really have, uh, it looks like we are at the peak of our uh, relationship and we now, you know, it's moving on with, with the ongoing projects and um, so we are kind of, you know, between countries, we are talking about maybe more than transactional business models, we are moving on to more complementary and cooperative business models where we have in that in that uh, access and joint research uh, and developments. I am a, at the same time member of Turkish uh, National Research Council. We recently started uh, open projects, research projects with Minister of Strategic Industries as well with Ukraine. It just recently actually started and there are open calls for the researchers to apply for, for these projects. So after uh, this uh, brief uh, introduction, I would like to ask our dear ambassador, Mr. Bodnar, about how he sees, because he has experience in Turkey, uh, and now uh, as a new ambassador, he knows how the government side, the tendency, how it is going on, and how this defense relationship affects, uh, the defense projects and defense ecosystem affects the relationship status of uh, both uh, countries. Thank you very much, the Haluk Bey, uh, Your Excellencies, uh, colleagues. I'm very happy to be here and very proud to be here. So uh, I have the honor to represent Ukraine, one of the stronger and potential country and very good uh, ally for Turkey. Uh, so really for me, it's, uh, it's a big honor to be, to be here appointed as ambassador. First of all, we now are celebrating the 10th anniversary of our strategic partnership. And this strategic partnership is based on two main dimensions. First of all, it's a trust and political cooperation and dialogue between our presidents, and they are guiding a number of their actions. But the other thing is we have a practical locomotive, and the practical locomotive of our strategic partnership is our defense cooperation. So as you correctly mentioned, during the last uh, couple of years, uh, the, this dimension of cooperation became very visible and became very important for two of our countries. So first of all, why it is strategically important? Uh, we are the countries who are not only selling to each other some products, but we are doing things together. We are working on some uh, prospects which could uh, strengthen our defense, strengthen our capabilities, strengthen our resilience, and in today's world, it's really important that we are complementary countries we are working together by supplying each other something, but not competing. That is the basic, basic ground of our interest. Secondly, it is important that we are uh, looking for, uh, for the new dimensions of cooperation, and I see it here in this exhibition. So I have been working here a couple of years ago like Consul General, and I have also been visiting different exhibitions, but such a strong presentation of Ukraine 
and such an innovative uh, products which have been produced proposed here, it shows how, how strongly we are developing and how uh, important to strengthen our cooperation and to, to look for the future. And that is one of the things. The, the other important element is also that we um, have a wide range of, of things, not only concentrating on something uh, specific areas, but widening it, starting from land, sea, uh, air, and space. And that is also important to use all the potentials we have. So Ukraine is a very strong country in science, in industry, and Turkey is a very strong country in introducing something new into production. And composing two elements of, uh, of, of, of these, let's say, strong elements of our countries, bringing us as a uh, very strong allies to the international arena. And we could work not only for the benefit of two of us, but also could work on the third markets and produce and compete with the relevant European and American companies. So that is also very important interest for businesses, both uh, state-owned and private. And that is also something which worked correctly well, that the private business is also doing its good, proposing something new and innovative ideas, and also stimulating also to some extent state to be more active in defending their interests, in protecting their interests, in promoting their interests. So it is also hugely important. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm really happy that yesterday you have signed a number of agreements on different engine things, but I also believe that we will have uh, more and more contracts and finally, we would have more and more developing balanced uh, relationship based not only on, uh, on what has already been done, but also on the settling productions on the territory of our countries, which is really important. And the memo you have signed, for example, with uh, our Minister of Defense show how, how we are developing in this direction and how we are promoting the settling of industries on territory of both, of both countries. And as well for us, it's, it's hugely important also to have uh, to have uh, the, this, let's say, openness from both sides, which we enjoy recently, and uh, it's also thanks to the very strong activities of our ministers, of our presidents, and so governments see it's a very positive way. Governments are working to, to support all positive initiatives, and for sure, for me as a for new ambassador, it's the key task to strengthen all what's have been done and to work on new projects. And these new projects, I believe, will strengthen not only the, let's say, bilateral strategic partnership, but also will bring our countries stronger in the region and in the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, dear Ambassador, uh, for, your, for, your, uh, uh, for your views. And uh, it's really very clear, as you say, actually, you know, unmanned systems, you know, our cooperation on the field of armed UAVs was a, well, it's a really success, a very clear success story, actually. We cooperate on the field of armed UAVs, but at the same time, we are as well powering our new strategic class UAVs with the Ukrainian engine technologies. So it's a really a clear benefit to both sides, and which, uh, you know, and you know, Turkey overall has big ambitions. So we have fighter jet programs, attack helicopter programs, strategic class, unmanned fighter, a lot of huge projects. And all these projects, Turkey by itself as a country, you know, we have a spending budget of maybe 15 to 20 billion dollars. Ukraine has maybe five to 10 billion dollars. But creating these alliances gives a really great potential, uh, this alliance and export potential as well at the same time. So I would like to um, extend uh, the speech to Mr. Bukin because Mr. Bukin uh, really has great experience and uh, he was really active in building up the relationship between the two countries. So I would like to get his perspective, maybe the timelines and the, very briefly about the history and how he sees the today and how uh, we can move forward uh, with this. So I would like to extend the speech uh, to him for his uh, views as well. Thank you very much, Haluk, for this. Thank you, friends, for your, uh, friends for your coming and uh, dis distributing your time to be with us here. Uh, for this meeting, I have uh, prepared the presentation for us to see what was before, what was the history of development of military industry of Turkey, what was the history and uh, pretext of the military industry of Ukraine, uh, when Turkey started, when Ukraine started, where we are now and what to do further for us, for the both countries, to be as much effective as possible. So if you don't mind, let me start.
In my presentation, you will see the five points, five critical points which causes the development of both countries in the field of military industry. So let's start from Turkey. Uh, pay attention, in, 19, in 1974, the political idea of creation of the national defense industry of Turkey was in, in, institutional in, instituted in Turkey. It happened after the events on Cyprus when the United States imposed sanctions to Turkey. Then in 11 years, in 1985, uh, Turkey uh, launched the national project of the modernization of the armed forces. And also, I'd like to underline that during following 10 years after 1984, uh, state, Turkish state invested 12 billion US dollars in defense sector. It happened, it started in 1985. So the next date is 1991. In Turkey, there was a situation when insignificant amount of defense companies mostly operating in the cooperation chains of the foreign manufacturers, exist, uh, manufacturers existed, and Turkish Association of Defense Industry Manufacturers, at that time it was called SASAD, included only 21 members. So only 21 defense companies, it was in 1991. The same year, in 1991, in Ukraine. After the dissolution of the Soviet Union, Ukraine inherited 700 state-owned military enterprises, employing more than 1, uh, 1, 300. Uh, thousand people. Uh, at that time, country also had famous design schools and serial plants in, in the aircraft, armed vehicles, ship and engine building, as well as aerospace. And cumulative annual production volume of these 700, uh, 700 factories was about 10 billion US dollars. Pay attention, it is 1991, and 10 billion dollars in 1991 is different from 10 billion dollars now. So all, all, all world currencies depreciated. Further development dynamics. Turkey, from 1986, demonstrated continued growth of the state uh, capital investment in defense sector, constant increase in the volume, volume of state defense procurement. During the next 10 years, uh, from 1986, only on the secretary uh, of defense industry of Turkey, now it's uh, uh, uh, Bashkan League of Defense Industry under the president of Turkey. Only this organization invested in the defense industry in 10 years, from till 1986 till 1996. They invested 18.5 billion US dollars, and it was done in addition to the, to the Turkish defense procurement programs. Also, uh, in, 2000, uh, in 2004, Turkey announces the program of defense manufacturing localization. In the next year, in, in 2005, uh, SSB uh, and the Secretary of Defense Industry of Turkey concluded, it was official information, concluded 100 contracts with the local manufacturer and totally amounting uh, more than 1 billion US dollars. It was done in 2004. Uh, Ukraine till 2014, the, the, in Ukraine till 2014, the state defense procurement was almost absent. Uh, we had very limited res residual financing over uh, research and development project in the defense sector. Ukrainian end users consumed, consumed only from 5 to 7 percent of general volume of the local defense manufacturing. From 93 to 95 percent of the Ukrainian defense products were exported. At the same time, due to the, of course, we see that we have lack, lack of uh, research and development, lack of capital investment. Uh, the Ukrainian military export mostly consisted of outdated equipment and leftovers from the uh, Minister of Defense warehouse. And at that time, what was most critical that Russia catered, catered at that time uh, um, uh, 60 percent uh, of the needs of the Ukrainian defense industry being, being extremely critical supplier for Ukraine, Ukrainian defense manufacturers. Now we are going to 2009. Uh, in 2009 in Turkey, number of defense industry workers increased to 45,000. Uh, the same period of time in 2009, the number of defense companies in Ukraine dropped down from 700 to 230 companies. The number of employees in the industry was reduced 
was reduced to 250,000 uh, people, and this uh, indicator dropped from uh, 1 million 300,000 in 1991. Uh, annual production of goods fell to uh, 1.5 billion US dollars. Uh, I'd like to remind that in 1991 it was 10 billion US, US dollars. In 2010, uh, the share of Turkish manufacturers in the national defense procurement increased from 25 to 50 percent. Uh, then in, in 2011, you see uh, on the, in the bottom, Ukrobron uh, Prom State Concern was, uh, was established in 2011. The aim was declared to consolidate all the defense enterprises in the condition of very limited orders from the Minister of Defense of Ukraine. We were focused on export. And at that time, in 2012-2013, the peak export indicator was 1.2 billion US dollars annually. In 2014, the same time, Turkish was focused on the creation of closed production cycle, uh, increased the market share of private defense companies, uh, started to create joint, joint ventures with the foreign manufacturers in Turkey, and encouraged foreign companies to transfer technology from Turkey to their native countries. In 2014, uh, when the war started, you see that war was really a precondition for the strategic partnership between Ukraine. The war with Russia was a strategic precondition for the partnership between Ukraine and Turkey. In 2014, in Turkey, it was a trend of expansion of the line of cereal products. Among them, uh, most famous were unmanned vehicles, light, light armored vehicles, military cars, navy ships, patrol boats, uh, patrol boats, electronic systems, uh, means of communication, guided and unguided munitions, etc. Uh, Ukraine in 2014 uh, start, actually started financing of defense sector, launched the state defense procurement system. It was a break of cooperation of ties with the Russian defense industry. Uh, the armed forces increased in size from 166,000 people to 250,000 people. Decades old demand we had for, uh, because uh, procurement system before 2014 uh, was not operative, uh, was absent. We had decades old demand for weapons and military equipment. And, it, and of course, when you, do not pro when you do not procure for a long time, at one moment of time, you have lack of current funding for this procurement. So we faced in 2014. And at that period of time, 80% of expenses of, uh, were directed to the routine needs of the armed forces of Ukraine. We are getting closer to, the today, to today. And uh, uh, now next point is 2018. Uh, in 2018, if to co count from 2002, the number of defense manufacturers in Turkey increased for, from uh, 56 to 150 companies. 65% uh, of the needs of the Tur Turkish armed forces uh, uh, uh, were covered by local manufacturers. In 2000. 18, Ukraine made the first successes in the creation of the military systems, but of course it was when you start to develop something, uh, the, the, another effect is uh, it was accompanied by slow serial production. And uh, we, start, we activated the critical import procurement. It, firstly, it was ATGM systems and combat UAVs and communication means other as a product that were absent on, uh, on Ukrainian market and were needed for the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine. What we have in, total, in 2020, it's, I think it, it, it was a start of very active cooperation in all the fields. In Turkey in, 2000, in, 20, in 2020, the size of armed forces was 355,000 uh, people. Defense spending budget annually 13 billion, 13 billion US dollars, and 70% of the military needs were covered by national defense industry. In uh, Ukraine, the same 2020, the size of the army is 245,000 people. Defense spending, it's, it is total, not only procurement, also routine needs of the army is 4.3 billion US dollars. And now, the local defense industry caters only 10 or 15, from 10 to 15 needs, uh, percent of the needs of the 
national defense. What is inside these figures? First of all, in Turkey, now uh, currently six, 660 projects estimated in, tot estimated in total more than 70 uh, billion US dollars are realized, and they are realized, let me underline, be beyond the budget of the Minister of Defense of Turkey. Turkey started aggressive export programs as well as expansion of the sales market. Uh, also, uh, seven Turkish companies inclu uh, were included in the top 100 list of the world defense companies. Leaders in this uh, list, Asilsan, Thai, uh, Asilsan had 2.2 billion US dollar turnover in 2020, and Thai, 1.2 billion US dollars. Yearly export, export volume from Turkey currently is 20. 2.7 billion US dollars, and Turkey already announced ambitious target 10 billion US dollars to be reached, as far as I remember, till, uh, the, uh, till 2025. I, I think that, let's see, life will show. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, we still have some troubles. Uh, it, it, it, we will overcome them, but uh, currently, uh, the government target programs for the development of weapons uh, covered by actual finance by 25%. Effectiveness, rate of effectiveness of the program of development of new types of weapons uh, is only 6.3%. Uh, but uh, we were lucky to activate joint military industrial pro projects with Turkey. Uh, let me mention Baikar Defense, STM, Asilsan, other companies. Sorry for, for that companies that I did not uh, mention now. That they didn't mention now. Share of local private companies in Ukraine defense procurement reaches more than 50 percent. It's good rate. Uh, Ukrobron Prom Group cumulative gross income estimated 650 million US dollars in, in 2020. And Ukrobromprom represented Ukraine in the top 100 list of world defense companies. Ukrainian defense export estimated 700, uh, 700 million US dollars, and we still we see that uh, still the Ukrainian defense industry is mostly oriented to export than to the national procurement programs. So, in previous uh, with previous information, I, I tried to show uh, where we were before. And, and where we are now. What should be done for the both countries? We see that Turkey, uh, due to a uh, long period of time, the national idea of creating the uh, defense industry creation was announced in 1974. Then the, the start, the launch of massive uh, target-oriented investment was done in 1985. In Ukraine, the investment in R&D sector, in defense sector, in defense procurement started in 2014. So speaking frankly, Ukraine is 29 years behind Turkey, and Turkey in this relation is icebreaker for Ukraine, really. And I, what, should we, uh, what, what should we do? What is very positive? Uh, Ukrainian defense, the very positive is that Ukrainian defense industry still has competitive cases on the world market. I'd like to mention here development of missiles and space technologies, special purpose aircraft, precision guided munitions, radars, light and heavy armed vehicles, engines for missile aviation, and Navy systems. Already, we, I counted, we already announced 30 joint Ukrainian Turkish projects as preconditions, and they are preconditions for strategic uh, partnership. Uh, already, uh, we are conducting uh, Building of Corvettes for UA, uh, Corvettes for Navy, Baikar Defense, uh, already in process and open facilities in Ukraine for the construction of new UAVs. Uh, also, uh, Ivchenko Progress yesterday signed the contract and supplies, and previously signed some other contracts, and they supply uh, aviation agents to Turkish aircraft industry. What are priorities for Ukraine in this condition? Of course, Turkey has invested huge amount of money, it has spent a long time for research and development in defense sector. So localization of Turkish flagship military products is, of, is very important for our armed forces to be uh, more effective more and to, to hide the level of operation readiness. Uh, also, 
economic reasons are very important. It's creation of tax preferences system for foreign investors, expansion of industrial parks. Very important, I'd like to pay your attention here, that optimization of offset regulation in Ukraine. Offset procedures should attract critical technology and not vice versa. It should be taken into account that Ukraine is not a big importer of weapons and has very limited internal military market. Our Ukrainian market is not huge as, for example, of in as India or China or other countries. And uh, it is not reasonable to force transfer of technology at the cost of foreign manufacturers. Critical technology means that you need it critically. If you need it critically, it's most important to have it, uh, and uh, cost is the second priority. We should also apply new approaches to human relations. We should involve uh, young people in defense Ukrainian in, in, in the defense industry of Ukraine. Uh, we should revive traditional Ukrainian engineering schools. Uh, for Turkey, uh, very precious is Ukrainian experience in product promotion to the markets of the third countries. Also, we can intellectually support Turkish defense industry in traditional directions for Ukraine. And of course, very important, but this job needs uh, homework to be done. It's joint development of air defense system, joint modernization of the aircraft and helicopters of the armed forces of Ukraine, uh, uh, joint manufacturers of guided munitions, uh, adaptation of Ukrainian propulsion system in the Turkish naval platform. It is the, the key uh, initiatives to be uh, launched as soon as possible. And some projects already were discussed during Saha Expo yesterday and the day before yesterday. And I'm, uh, the main summary out of this is that Turkey, Ukraine are natural partners. We are sentenced for both countries are sentenced for strategic partnership. And I hope that sentence we are sentenced for strategic partnership. And uh, I think both participants uh, the market participants from the both countries understand this and I made I have made this presentation just to motivate dialogue between us and uh, if Haluk B allows I uh, I will give the floor to my colleague Vadim Nozdria thank you yeah thank you uh, thank you mr. Bukin for this uh, extensive and really very valuable presentation. Uh, it, it really clearly, clearly reflects. Thank you. Thank you, and with the value of this uh, relationship. Maybe the timelines are different. We have our differences, we have our similarities. Maybe there are some shifts. Uh, Ukraine has its own experience, Turkey has its own experience, but it, it is really clear from your presentation and the picture that we, you know, this alliance, this strategic partnership really uh, really is very complementary and it, it, it, it, it carries with it a great uh, potential. As far as I see from your presentation, the private market, the private manufacturers in Ukraine is increasing. Uh, and uh, it was before more public companies, but now it's more pr uh, private. We have a similar story in Turkey as well. So Saha actually represents this dynamism in Turkey. We just trying to bring the private sector to the def defense ecosystem to make it more price effective, to make it more sustainable. There is a, there is a similarity in that way. And also, this success story is like, like aligning in armed UAVs or using Ukrainian engines. We, we give a success story and then the rest comes with it. So now we, are, we, are, we have our own attack V2 helicopters are to be equipped with the Ukrainian engines, the some rocket engines, and also uh, other engine development programs are going on. So at this moment, uh, I would like to give a speech to Mr. Nozri as he is the director of uh, Ukraine Space Export, and Ukraine Space Export is the, to is the biggest export agency of Ukraine, and it is uh, one of the you know, flagship companies of Ukraine on this uh, relationship. So I would like to also ask him how he sees the, especially the export potential or from this alliance, and also there is right now an ongoing radical reformation in Ukraine to uh, reform on the defense industry. Maybe, if possible, to just cite a key, uh, some uh, opinion of him on this thing. So, thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Dear Haluk Bey, Your Excellency, Ambassador Bodnar, dear colleagues, 
dear esteemed guests and participants of Saha Expo. I am, uh, I am honored to represent today the state company Uker Space Expert at Saha Expo. And uh, I do praise the previous speaker, Mr. Bukin, for the very interesting uh, retrospective of our development and development of cooperation between Ukraine and Turkey. And uh, what is really noticeable is that the timeline for development of uh, defense industries of both countries is really synchronizing these days. And this is the biggest achievements for, for our nations. First of all, uh, let me say that uh, Saha Expo for us is the best chance to meet our strategic partners. They are namely, of course, the state-owned and uh, private companies in Turkey. And this is not the complete list of our partners who we meet here today and who we have the long-term partnership and ongoing projects and running contracts. I think it is obvious for the Turkey and Ukraine that our mutual goal is to extend our defense industry capabilities, but this is to increase, first of all, the strengths of our armed forces, the armed forces of Ukraine and armed forces of the Turkish Republic. And what is really important in the recent years, our cooperation is guided and supervised by their excellencies, the presidents, the President Recep Tayyip Erdogan and President Zelensky, and the intensity of the government-to-government -government relations is growing and give a very solid and positive basis to develop the cooperation between two nations. It is really hard to overestimate the significance of the very clear and strong position of the Turkish Republic in supporting the sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. And we do appreciate this clear position, clear and consecutive position of the Turkish Republic. And thus, we believe that we have got a lot of areas of mutual interest, and the dialogue is really developing between Turkey and Ukraine. Of course, for Ukraine and for the state concerned Ukarabron Prom, the main counterparty is the SSB. And uh, we have got already a lot of formalized cooperation programs signed and between SSB and Ukarabron Prom. And we, Ukar Space Expert, being the main export agency, state owned company authorized by the government of Ukraine to promote export of military goods and services, and also overseeing import and performing the main procurement role. We, uh, just using this opportunity, would like to uh, present our company as the company which has already 25 years of experience dealing on different markets around the world. And for our recent experience with the customers and our strategic partners from the Turkish Republic, we would like to underline that we have successfully performed several big-scale contracts in different spheres. Namely, these are the, the sphere of air defense. This is the sphere of uh, radar and supporting system. This is the high-precision systems produced and exported from Ukraine also to Turkey and other markets, and other big-scale and long-term contracts. I would also like to re-emphasize that we are not only doing the export contracts, but for us, very significant experience that Uker Spitz Expert as a state company gained was the first contract for supply of first set of Bayraktars to Ukraine. And Uker Space Expert was designated as a procurement agency for the needs of the uh, Minister of Defense of Ukraine. Now this program is uh, ongoing, and there are already direct supplies from Baikar Defense to the MOD of Ukraine. But for us, it is really hard to overestimate the experience that we gained together starting this very important project. And if you are following the news, indeed, 
the UAV Bayraktar TB2 is a game changer. Now, in the eastern part of Ukraine where we have the conflict. It has been mentioned today already and uh, I praise the success of our colleagues who signed yesterday a very important deal. And just to mention again that Ukraine offers design and delivery of modern aviation engines for aircraft platforms, for UAV platforms, and this has the support from the government. Our experience in the high precision weapon system is now well evaluated by our Turkish customers, our Turkish partners, and we do hope not only to expand this valuable cooperation, not only to supply the Ukrainian product. In fact, uh, I would stop here and to mention one important word, which is in the modern world gained a lot of importance, is indigenous production. For this case, it is 100% that Ukraine and Turkey together for this type of product, because we do import some important components from the Turkish Republic, from Aselsan, the thermal imager camera. We cover 100% and we produce 100% indigenously. We are not dependent. And this is very important in the modern world. We can decide for ourselves in case of some restrictions or sanctions may come. I would also use this unique opportunity to reemphasize again where we have the unique experience from uh, Ukrainian defense industry and uh, where we offer our goods and services. This is, of course, our unique tank diesel engines for armored platforms. Uh, and uh, we do hope that there is a room for further projects with, uh, with the Turkish defense industry to supply these engines to power the new pieces of armed equipment produced in Turkey. As it has been also mentioned today, uh, Ukraine is uh, very well experienced in producing design and delivery of gas turbine units for different naval platforms. And what we see today, the trend is to participate jointly in various projects uh, in, you know, exploring and collaborating to expand our export capacities for other markets. And I'm sure Osgur Bay from STM will definitely elaborate this, this fact. We are there in Ukraine, are always ready to supply and integrate and facilitate the integration of our gas turbine engines into naval platforms which are developed in the Turkish Republic. I have to say that uh, in the April this year, there was a cooperation agreement signed between SSB and Ukarabron Prom, which covered the spheres, the potential spheres of our cooperation. And it also includes the cooperation in uh, joint, potential joint manufacturing of the Antonov aircraft supply first of all, and joint manufacturing. So here we offer our medium cargo aircraft for the joint production also of the second prototype of world's biggest airplane, Maria, which is our proud in the sky. I'm, this is the great and unique experience today at Saha Expo for us, and uh, we also, uh, take part in supporting new developments of unmanned platforms, which are developed the, by Ukrainian state-owned and private companies. And I'm sure that there is a very big room for cooperation in this sphere in the future. And I would like to thank you once again for your kind attention. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Nozria, uh, for your great presentation. Uh, Mr. Nozria really touched on the specific ongoing 
big scale projects and also potential projects. As you might have seen, it's a really big variety from engines to platforms and to uh, other technology uh, products. So it's really, it's really very clear. And uh, uh, so it's about how to how to model it, how to model these projects to benefit the both sides. So the projects are there and uh, to be done and uh, clearly complementary. So in this regard, I once again thank you, Mr. Nozri, and would like to maybe follow up with uh, Mr. Uh, Gularius about the Navy side projects. And because we have a common Black Sea in between our countries, and the Navy projects are really essential and strategic for both countries. So I would like to have his views about the ongoing cooperation on the Navy side projects. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bayrekta. And I also thank you to all the colleagues here for the presentations. It was very fruitful for me also. I learned some more new things. I wouldn't like to repeat what we have discussed up to now, but it's for sure that collaboration between Ukraine and Turkey is a must. And we started to turn the engine, and now we should work on how to improve it as day passes. So, from naval side, I can give some more details about what we have done up to, up to now and what are our plans for the future for the cooperation. Our discussions are not new. We have started to discuss with Ukrainian colleagues and Ukrainian MOD for five years ago. We started discussing about procurement of some systems, maybe some Western systems for Ukraine, and then maybe procurement of some Turkish systems to Ukraine and getting some <clears throat> things from Ukraine. But then, as we started to discuss, we discovered that we can do some products together instead of just standing on the procurement side. So STM is basically an engineering company. We have a very long history in Turkish naval platforms, especially in the Milgan program. We have been, since the first day, together working with Turkish Navy and come up with Turkish other class corvettes. Now they are in service. Now we are responsible of making the fifth ship. When we discussed with Ukrainian MOD, it was for sure that there is a need on the Ukrainian side for such platforms also. But since the first point we started the discussion, we said that we are an engineering company. We can give support to the Ukrainian side in that sense in any way we can. Ukraine has a very long history about naval platforms also. There has been aircraft carriers built in Ukraine and very big and <clears throat> powerful ships by that time. But now we decided that there's lack of some engineering support in Ukraine. So, and STM was the right fit for that. And starting from the first day, we <coughs> always had our discussion so that we can complete ourselves in many senses. So our agreement is confidential. So up to now, we didn't give as STM side too much details. Only what Ukrainian MOD let us tell, we, we have managed to do it. But we have already started to build our COVID together. Now it's being built in Istanbul. The steel cutting cer ceremony was made in April 2021. And we, the keel laying was in August. And now more than 10 blocks of the ship are on the keel. And everything is going on, on schedule. We are going to complete the hull here and then transfer our ship to Ukraine. And we are going to outfit the ship in Ukraine so that our Ukrainian colleagues will have the capability to outfit and build a NATO standard modern system ships in Ukraine. And one of the biggest motivations is so that, especially on the naval platforms, STM has been given the duty of localization in submarine programs that are going in Turkey and naval platform building programs. The local contribution for the first meal gap shift was around 25%. Now for the fifth shift, we are around 75%. So we know how to even sometimes encourage the local industry to build systems for the naval platforms. And we believe that there's a huge potential on Ukraine in that sense. Already we know that there are some systems like gas turbine that can directly be integ integrated to our naval programs also. For example, yesterday we had a very long discussion with our Ukrainian colleagues. Our aim is to integrate Ukrainian, not only gas turbines, but also other systems to Turkish platforms, and in the future to have the chance to export them together to third, third parties also. 
Our <coughs> current contract is for building four Corvettes. The first one, as I mentioned, started in Turkey, but the rest will be built in Ukraine. With the contribution of Ukrainian side increasing day by day, we believe. We have not, it has not been very long since we started the project. We have signed the contract by the end of 2020, but already we have quite big improvements. As we get used to Ukrainian industry, as we have the chance to know them, we discover more and more. Already there are some systems that can be integrated directly to Turkish platforms and Ukrainian covers. But we believe that as time passes, as we start to work together and as the collaboration increases, the local contribution of Ukraine to Ukrainian Corvettes and to Turkish systems will increase day by day. So our collaboration is really a must for both of us because when we look at the table, we are very complementing each other. Where there is lack of Turkish experience, and so it exists in Ukraine. And when the lack of experience and industrial products is missing in Ukraine, then we have the capability to do it. So being together will give us power to both sides. It was our motivation since the first day. And as I already mentioned, as we work together day by day, we feel it more and more. So that's what I would like to say for the time being, so that our time is also limited. So if our colleagues have, would like to have the chance to have a second word. Um, so, so thank you, Mr. Gilarius, for sharing your experience on the Navy, Navy side. And once again, I want to emphasize that in all areas, we really have very quickly moving, big scale projects. And this just happened in the last um, a couple of years, thanks to, to the higher level uh, relationship and strategic level uh, relationship. Uh, you know, on the defense side, we have this really critical projects, but we see that on the research side as well, we have some ongoing things. And even I see from Mr. Nozrez, this Korsky challenge. Now we are talking about how we can facilitate our young generations. Uh, we are even talking about to conduct Technofest, uh, the, the world's biggest aerospace and tech festival, which we do in Turkey in the last four years to do it in Turkey. So that because defense is, a, you know, is an area in Turkey that uh, mobilize, mobilizes and motivates the young generations and becomes an example for them. We, we, we are just talking to do a similar scale, even uh, in Ukraine, a similar event. So it's, um, thank, thanks a lot for, for attending this, uh, this panel. And, um, you know, when we were planning, it's the only panel that covers the country-to-country -country relationship in this uh, exhibition is Tur Turkey-Ukraine defense relationship. But we ended up, Ukraine, having the biggest area as well in, the, in this exhibition. So it, it reflects itself in everywhere. So it's really our responsibility and uh, to add on more, to bring more value added to our own countries and to, to take this relationship on the, onto a higher level. So once again, I would like to extend uh, our thanks to our panels and also I would like to extend our thanks to, to, to our guests uh, for listening to us. Thank you. And we extend a big thanks for you for organizing everything and for all I have been doing for strengthening our cooperation. Thank you very much.